what you do if you have yarn at the front of the orifice and you're not getting any take up well there's uh, a few things to check if you have a brand new empty bobbin on check that your leader isn't slipping I will uh, show you why that's important uh, I make a leader out of this piece of yarn if I tie this on really loosely and uh, put it into place tension on, everything looks like it's set up well I don't want it spinning dead but if I start I'm just not getting any take up, this is just bunching up here uh, I'll get loads and loads of twist in it and it's just not going to go anywhere that's because here the bobbin is just turning, 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 turning and the leader is staying in one place it's not, it's, this isn't tight enough um, a good way to do it is how I showed you in the uh, getting started videos um, to make a lark's head knot that is you get a loop of yarn put your loop around the bobbin and pass the ends through and then if you give that a good yank back against itself that's going to stay stuck and some wheels you might want to then do another another one do a double lark's head but um, this is quite good because the bobbins have a little bit of a textured surface so you tend not to get slip if you do this you can also use a bit of tape to hold your leader down or just make it extra long and do a couple of wraps before you start then it's not going to go anywhere if you're in the middle of spinning and uh, you're having trouble with take up then uh, it might simply be that your bobbin is filling. This uses a scotch tension system and uh, as the bobbin fills and gets uh, more yarn then uh, you'll find you will need to increase your tension. So just uh, turn this dial to the right, clockwise direction and you'll see this band gets tighter and your spring starts to stretch. If that doesn't fix your problem, check the path of your yarn. So going to one hook to the back hook and out through the orifice. You will want to check that this hook is behind this end of the bobbin so there is no rubbing between the yarn here and the end of the bobbin there. If this hooks up here then you'll have an added bit of friction there that might not stop take up but it will certainly reduce it so added to a few other points of friction you may not get take up on your yarn so make sure that one's there these hooks are quite good at not snagging but if you're spinning a very bulky yarn with lots of random bits sticking off the edge you might find you get the odd fibre snagging on here so uh, just pull your yarn away and put it back and check you've got no snags. Another place you might get snags is here in the orifice. Again, if you spin in a very, very chunky yarn, this hole isn't that uh, isn't that big. So uh, you might want to take the orifice reducer off. Then you'll have a nice large path, bigger than my little finger, so you can make yarn up to that thick and it'll happily go through there and through the hooks without snagging. And uh, once you've checked all those things, you should be able to get tape, take up again. If you are getting take up but it's not enough for whatever very fat yarn you're spinning and you've got this nice and tight and your spring stretched then uh, you might want to change out your brake band spin for a thicker string and a thicker band uh, which I will discuss in the next question. Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about your brake band and spring on your Electric Eel 6. It comes with a quite thick piece of string as a brake band and this spring here. You will give that a bit of a tug. It stretches but not easily. In the bag of extras you will find this spring which stretches far far easier. So. Which one do you want to use? It depends on the sort of yarns you're spinning. If you're spinning 
moderate to thick weight yarns, going down to a little bit of lace weight occasionally, then you'll be fine with the spring it comes with. If you're consistently spinning very, very fine yarns, you'll want um, more responsive adjustment, very, very small increments in tension. So you'll find this slightly stretchier spring is better. Breakband itself, um, the string it comes with is completely fine. I'm used to using much f uh, thinner breakband material, so uh, I immediately changed mine out. There's no need for you to do this if you don't want to, but if you do, here's how to do it. First of all, choose what you want to use as your breakband material. Generally, I prefer cotton, tightly plied, very strong, mercerised, so it doesn't break. So I've got uh, this thread here and see compared how thick it is compared to my hand. That's a good thickness, I quite like that. Um, I often use crochet cotton of this thickness. Unfortunately, I don't know where I've put mine. Uh, so what I'm going to use is this. It's a braided fishing line. You can see it's far more drapey than the monofilament. You can use the monofilament stuff but I find uh, it's not very responsive so uh, I'll be using this. It's a lot stronger than cotton. It's This will last pretty much forever. And uh, You can see it's slightly finer than uh, the crochet cotton but it, it doesn't matter. It's entirely down to uh, personal preference so uh, you can either leave your brake band as it is or uh, experiment with different things to uh, decide what you like. See on this side of the back this is where your spring goes. You've got a little slit uh, point with the tip of my scissors. A little slit there and a little hole there. Your spring will slide into the slit horizontally and then uh, wiggle a little bit and you'll see the top comes out of the hole. To get it out again it needs just a little bit of fidgeting. You'll push it down so it falls into the hole and then uh, pull it out horizontally. So I'm going to put this spring back in because uh, I'm spinning to demonstrate and uh, it's better with a little bit of uh, fatter yarn. Uh, far easier if it's down on the desk to uh, slot this into place. There we go, I've got my spring there. And on this side we have the uh, tension adjuster knob and uh, the thread will go around the knob through this hole here. Um, that hole there and underneath the back and out this little groove here that will go round the bobbin onto the spring. So I will measure how much thread we need by that much around there and a little bit more to time. So that will be sufficient. I'll thread this from this side through this hole. Okay. Uh, you could thread it the other way but I think this is probably going to be slightly easier. We will soon see. I'm going to grab my scissors to uh, add some tension to this knot. Oh, actually I'm going to pull this uh, through a little bit more just to tie the other side of the knot. And again, around. And the pair of hemostats would be useful, but I do not have any with me, so scissors will have to do. Okay, so that knot is tight enough, it's not uh, slipping. Uh, the shaft is nice and uh, grippy here, which is good, so you don't have to get your knot super tight. This around here, go over that bobbin and through. I tie this fairly loosely so I've uh, got enough room on this side to give this an extra turn to make sure it's really, really uh, not going to slip because that's the last thing I want it to do while I'm spinning is for my tension to go all screwy. Right, 
securely knotted on that end. Cut off the excess. Cut off the excess here. And put that over the brake band. Then, as I tighten it, I'm going to want this to always tighten as I turn it to the right. So uh, make sure I get it started the right way. Alright, this is slipping. Okay, there we go. Now that's wrapped over itself, so that's not going to slip. And my brake band is installed. This is probably too tight, you can see uh, the spring is slightly stretched. That, for most sorts of spinning, that'll be too much. A really uh, thick art yarn might need that much tension, but generally, I want a nice bit of give in this band and the string, uh, spring to be uh, not at all stretched. Uh, you just, every single time you sit down to spin, put a little bit of pressure on your brake band and uh, you'll soon get used to how much you need for each sort of spinning that you do. So what you do, if you're happily spinning away, everything's going well, and then all of a sudden your arm breaks and you lose your end. I like that a bit tapered so it might get hidden a bit. End lost. Now, this has been very badly behaved for this demonstration as because I was spinning with uh, quite a low take up, the end has actually not hidden itself. But sometimes, quite often in fact, you will find that your end just buries itself and uh, with a quick look at it like this you can't find it. So uh, a few tips that might help you uh, help you get the end back. The first thing I normally try is a toothbrush. First of all I will look at where I expect my end to be. So I have my yarn guide here which means I know my end is going to be level with this bit of the bobbin so there's no point me searching around down here or up there. The end is going to be somewhere here. So uh, you can just gently run your finger over the bobbin. You know the direction it's going to be in. If you're spinning Z, it's going to have wrapped this way, so it wants to lift off this way. If you're spinning S, it would be the other way around. It would want to lift off under. Uh, you can gently run your fingers over it, but don't do it too much because you'll just find you end up compressing the end into lower layers and end up in real trouble finding it. Instead, get your toothbrush and gently uh, brush and you can see my end is here. So you just brush around the bobbin all the way in the direction you expect the end to appear and uh, it will pop up. Another thing you can do, let me just hide that again, is uh, use a bit of masking tape. Uh, you can use regular sellotape, but if you use sellotape, I suggest you stick it on your hand and take it off a couple of times first to make it slightly less sticky. Otherwise, you will find that it's uh, sticking to all the loose fibres on the uh, yarns next to it, and uh, yarn will get a bit more fluffed up than you want it. With this, just make a little loop and put it around your finger, and uh, yeah, I can see it's pulled this loop free. Another thing you can do if you happen to have it to hand is uh, get your vacuum cleaner and run it over the bobbin and that will suck the loose end up. Now, if you absolutely, definitely cannot find your end uh, and you're going to need to dig for it, I'll put it down again, what you want to do is have a look and figure out an end that you can see is near the surface. So I'm going to pick this one and slide something underneath it. I've got a pair of hemostats here just because they were next to me. A uh, knitting needle will work fine and we know that if we want to find the end it's going to be more to this direction, to my right. So I put that under and turn. Oh, I've already found it. That was too easy. Let's find a different strand. Okay, let's go under there. 
so I will turn and turn and here my strand goes under another one so I know this isn't the top strand so I will lift my hemos up and put them under the one it goes underneath and follow that round and again that goes under another one so I will put those under and each time I'm just working my way closer and closer to the top and there we go then I've got my end uh, only use this method uh, if you're really desperate and you cannot find it because this will start pushing uh, the other layers down amongst each other What do you do if your machine has power but the flyer isn't moving? First you check you actually have got power, your power supply will plug into there, you'll have a little flash of that light so you'll know it's powered up. Check that your speed dial is on something other than zero and it should turn. If it doesn't then check this drive band here. This. Uh, pulley should be turning attached to this drive band which then goes in this little groove here. If you're not careful when you're putting it on you can get the drive band wedged in between this front part and this here and that's going to jam and you won't, uh, you won't get any movement of the flyer. Also be careful nothing's touching the flyer arms. I found a couple of times when I was filming my earlier videos I'd push this right back here and the flyer arm was touching on the wall so obviously that's not going to go anywhere. Another question people often ask is what do you do with the loose end of your yarn when you're taking a break from spinning? Well, why do you have to do anything with it is generally my uh, first thought. I will often just let it wind on as much as it can and then put my attached fibre round here underneath the flyer and this will just sit there on the side till I'm ready to spin again. Uh, it doesn't let any twist out because this piece of fibre is weighting it down and it doesn't get in the way, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Even if you've got to the end of your piece of fibre, um, I generally just leave it hanging from the orifice. Yes, it might untwist a little bit, but well, I can, before I'm ready to start spinning again, grab it and add more twist if I need to and I like to have this bit nice and fluffy and untwisted anyway because it makes the next join easier so don't feel you have to do anything with your loose end however there are a few things you can do if you like to have it nice and tidy and uh, exactly where you want it the first thing is uh, Fibre is very fluffy, it sticks really well to Velcro. So you can buy self-adhesive Velcro circles, you can just stick one of them down there or down here to the side, and then when you're done spinning, put your fibre on it and it'll get caught in the Velcro and stay there until you want to use it. The next thing, which I do use when I'm plying, if I have two ply threads attached to my orifice and I need to take a break, I don't want my lazy cake and all these threads all in the way, so I'll wind it up as close to the wheel as I can, put it right next to it, and then use one of these, which are called uh, quilting clips or wonder clips or sewing clips, something like that. Uh, they're just little clips, you can use a bulldog clip, a peg, anything little like this. and. Uh, these you clip your yarn to anywhere you want. Uh, I tend to put it, you need to get it underneath the teeth here, otherwise, it's not doing much good. So uh, you can clip it to the frame there, and that holds it in place. Or well, that's a little bit fiddly, it is easier if I can bend over it without uh, worrying about getting my head in the way. But uh, another thing you can do is clip it back here to one of the flyer hooks and that'll hold it in place or maybe on the edge of the orifice reducer here yeah that's a good one so uh, yeah these little clips I, I do use it when plying but when I'm uh, just spinning singles I tend not to bother with securing my end at all now what do you do if you're getting vibration at high speeds like this. The whole thing is resonating and it's quite noisy. It is not supposed to be this noisy. 
and the reason you'll be getting that is if your flyer isn't balanced. If you're turning something that's asymmetrical at high speed, you are going to get a lot of noise as it wobbles. So you want to make this balanced. You need your hooks level on both sides. You need to make sure both your sets of hooks are on. So uh, don't take your left hand side ones off even if you're not using them. For low speed spinning, you can generally just keep the arm that you're not using in the middle, so I tend to just keep it here on the left hand side in the middle. But once I start spinning at higher speeds, I will make sure if I move my guide one, that I move the opposite one to compensate. So I'll put them to this position here where they're both nice and symmetrical, and we'll turn it up again and we'll see how much the wobble is reduced. There we go, that's much smoother. You, you've still got a bit of noise from uh, the motor and uh, the air rushing past the fly, but you haven't got the uh, wobble in. I'll show you again. Move them asymmetrically. It even starts walking across the desk there. So uh, that's what happens with an unbalanced flyer.